Hi, this video is on internal energy and the first law of thermodynamics. It's a physics video. And for those of you who've been paying attention to my YouTube uh, site, uh, we've been on this journey for years. But we're in, finally in chapter 19 of Young and Friedman's University Physics. And this is a chapter on the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is basically a formalization of the law of the conservation of energy. That is, that the energy uh, at the beginning of a, of a process and the energy at the end of a process is going to be the same. The energy may change forms, it may flow in a different direction, but the total amount of energy is always going to be the same. And so the first law of thermodynamics, which we're going to formalize uh, in this uh, video, um, kind of captures that in math. Um, so the previous uh, video that I did, 19.3, was on the path that a thermodynamic process might take. Um, path being the way it gets from initial state one to, to final state two. There are different paths that a process can take to get from one to two. And what we found in the previous video is that the amount of heat that is absorbed or given off may be different depending on the path one takes to get from point one to point two. Similarly, the amount of work done may be um, uh, different depending on the path you take to get from one and two. But what we're going to find in this video is that the combination of heat and work, even though, they even though the amount of heat and work is going to be different depending on the path, the combination of the heat and work is going to always be the same, no matter what the path is. This is, was discovered by experiment. And so because the heat and the work can be variable, we're introducing the idea of the internal energy of a system. And we're saying uh, that this internal energy uh, is what we should be uh, looking at rather than the heat or the work as a component of that internal energy. Well, let's, let's, if that's uncertain, let's dive right in and maybe it'll become clear. So what is internal energy? Well, on a microscopic level, that is on terms of the little teeny little molecules and atoms, we might define the internal energy of a system as the sum of the kinetic energies of all those little teeny teeny atoms, plus the sum of all the potential energies of all those teeny teeny teeny, teeny atoms, the interaction between those particular partic particles. But be careful, we're not talking about the potential energy of the system in relation to its surroundings. So let's say we're talking about a thermodynamic system that's 100 meters up in the air, you know, then it has the potential energy of, of dropping, you know, MGH. Um, we're not talking about that. We're talking about internal potential energies, the potential energies of interaction among these particles. So it's an internal thing. So internal energy becomes the sum total of all the kinetic and potential energies inside uh, the system. This concept is going to become very important when we get, for example, to quantum uh, quantum mechanics um, and such. Okay, so internal energy described microscopically. Now the problem is, how do you add that all up? I mean, okay, I mean we're going to be we're, for the rest of my life. I'm going to be counting the energies of all the atoms in a little, you know, whatever motor, um, and I'll die, and my great great grandchildren will still be doing it, you know, because anyway, there, there are so many millions of atoms, and so it becomes more uh, convenient from an operating perspective to talk about changes in internal energy rather than the actual internal energy of a system. Why? Uh, because we can track the amount of heat that flows in and out of a system, and we can track the amount of work that a, a system does or that is done on a system. And so it's more convenient to talk about changes in you. We can kind of benchmark, we're, gonna, we're just gonna call the baseline internal energy of this such and such, and then we're gonna track the changes to it. And so the changes in U, and by the way, you might remember that U, we, we use the symbol U back in mechanics for potential energy. Just don't forget about that. We're gonna, in thermodynamics, we're gonna use the letter U in relation to the total internal energy of a, of a system, not in terms of its just its potential energy, okay? So delta U, the change in U equals the final internal energy minus the initial internal energy. Ah, mind blown, this is rocket science. Well, anyway, it's, it's useful in rocket science, but that's not important right now. So that's the change in internal energy. So what this means is, is that if heat is added to a system, but no work is done, and remember when heat is added to a system, that's a positive heat value, 
um, then we would say that the change in U, delta U, is equal to Q, the amount of heat added. Um, similarly, if work is done but no heat is added, and by the way, work uh, is positive when it is done on uh, the surroundings, which means that it involves a negative value within the system. And so we would say that delta U, the change in internal energy, is going to be the negative value of the work done because the work is flowing out and therefore energy is being lost. Okay, so there you have it. So we can say that delta U equals U2 minus U1, which equals the amount of heat minus the amount of work. And here we've just added, right? We've just added this together. Um, so we've added um, Q plus minus W to get the change in, in delta U. Okay, and so this is basically the first law of thermodynamics. We can rearrange uh, the pieces around. So again, what I've already said this, the first law of th thermodynamics is a generalization of the law of the conservation of energy to include energy transfer through heat and mechanical work. And it's going to be, this is just, I've just rearranged it. Um, we've taken the W, added W to both sides and we get um, that basically Q equals delta U plus the work done. And there you have it, the first law of thermodynamics. All right. Um, like I said, it is more useful to think about the change in internal energy than to, to think about its total amount because of how hard it is to quantify a bunch of, of atoms. So changes in internal energy. So here's what I was saying at the beginning. We saw in the previous video that changes in heat and work are dependent on the path. What experiment has shown is that the change in internal energy from an in initial state to a final state, that is the same no matter what path is taken. And so this is a very valuable uh, truth to know. It seems to me that, that uh, Richard Feynman, this was, he used this concept to great effect when he was uh, doing quantum uh, physics in the mid 20th century. So here's a quote from Young and Friedman. The change in internal energy of a system during any thermodynamic process depends only on the initial and final states not on the path that leads from one to the other. Not, so it doesn't matter how you get from initial state to final state, the total change in internal energy is going to be the same. And by the way, uh, because this is true, it means that the internal energy of a system depends only on its state, these, in other words, what, what its state is, what the state of its pressure is, what the state of its volume is, what the state of its temperature is. The internal energy of a system depends only on its state, state coordinates, P, V, and two, T. So we're going to be able to formulate matters of internal energy using pressure, volume, and temperature. And of course, um, if, you, if you know two of these, you know the third, because these are interrelated. So you, you really only need to have two state coordinates to be able to, to do these sorts of calculations. Okay, there you have it. We have, we've covered the majority of this section. There are some special cases that might be mentioned. For example, there are cyclic uh, processes. This is where it returns to its original state. And of course, if, if the final state is the same as the initial state, that means that U2 equals U1, which means that the amount of heat equals the amount of work, which means that there is a uh, delta U equals zero, right? Because there's no change in internal energy. Um, the example given in the book is of someone who um, expends as much energy throughout the day as they eat. And so their total amount of heat consu uh, calories consumed, Q, equals the amount of work that they've done through, through the day. And so they, they don't gain any weight, they don't lose any weight. Um, so that's a cyclic process. Now, of course, I'm sure that it's never exactly the same. Um, and um, those of us like me who like to eat uh, probably tend to have a positive uh, change in internal energy, unfortunately. Well, okay. Another kind of special case is an isolated state, state uh, system. This is a system that does no work at all on its surroundings. No heat flows in and out. Everything is internal uh, uh, to the system itself. In this case, um, the change is, is zero because no work is done and no heat flow, flows in. So that's an isolated uh, system. Okay. Um, the last section of this, of this, I mean, the last part of this this uh, section deals with infinitesimal changes of state. This is where we go calculus on you. And it's really very simple. Basically says that a incremental change in uh, the internal energy, du, equals 
the incremental change in heat, dq, not Dairy Queen, although that involves some cal caloric intake, minus the uh, infinitesimal change in, in work. So we've basically taken the first law of thermodynamics and calculusified it, infinitesimalized it. These are just very teeny, 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 tiny uh, increments, which allows us to do a little bit of, of calculus. Now, we learned in, the previous, uh, in a previous section, uh, I think it was two videos ago, that work equals um, uh, pressure times uh, volume. And so if we incrementalize that, then an incremental change in work equals the pressure times an incremental change in volume. And so there we have, uh, we have that. I believe that's it for uh, today. And so we have done um, this section on the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, for the first time, we have actually seen the first law of thermodynamics in a formula form. And we have introduced the very important concept of internal energy. Happy Easter 2020.